Today I'm going to show you how to properly uh, measure a wound. Um, I will first off start off by um, identifying, identifying the patient according to um, agency protocol um, uh, abide by state and federal regulations. Um, I'm also going to um, attend to safety precautions, um, hand hygiene. Um, we're going to make sure that we always ensure patient privacy, um, safety precautions, of course, um, privacy, safety, good body mechanics. Um, yeah. Um, beforehand, um, there's a few things that we need to follow up on. We always need to go back on the documentation from previous shifts and see what other nurses have done. Um, and what kind of dressing they have on them before we go in. Um, if we need to administer pain medicine, we do that 30 uh, minutes before um, hand, if necessary. Also, we want to make sure that we gather all of our su supplies that we are going to be needing, um, depending on the procedure. Um, okay, for measuring a wound, uh, we're going to make sure we'll have um, something to measure with, a measuring tool, and then our cotton swabs. Um, first thing we're going to do is we are going to measure the wound edges, um, ensuring that we are not touching our measurement tool onto the, to the wound. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, measure the length and the width. Um, the length is going to be from head to toe, um, and we're going to measure in centimeters. So we're just going to kind of measure from head to toe, and then we're going to also do our width. And our width is from hip to hip. Then we're going to take our cotton swabs. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the depth of the wound and make note of it. So once we have measured the depth of it, then we can kind of mark it um, either with our finger or, or a marker or something. And then we can compare it to our measuring tool and see how deep it is. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take our Q-tip and assess the wound for any tunneling. Um, the way we would document tunneling, um, so our head uh, would be using like a time um, deal. So like if we see tunneling right up here towards the head, we would count that as 12 o'clock. Um, and this would be 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Um, just for example, right here we have a tunneling going on and that is at 9 o'clock, so we would document that at 9 o'clock. Um, and then we would also assess the, the depth, the width, um, the length of that tunneling, and we would document it. And then when we were done, making sure that we document all of our stuff, um, we would clean up our area, we would take our gloves off, and then we would wash our hands. Once we have our syringe filled with our normal saline, um, we are going to make sure that we are holding it um, about two inches away from the wound. We don't want to touch the end to the wound. Um, and when we um, release the normal saline, we are going to work in a back and forth motion, um, starting from superior to inferior, so from top to bottom, in a back and forth motion. We'll repeat this step until we have seen um, the wound completely clear. Um, and then after that, we would take a gauze pad and we would pat dry around the wound. Uh, we would pat um, around the wound. We would start from the top and kind of work our way to the bottom. We would make sure that we are removing all of our stuff that we used, our basin, our drape. Um, we're putting it where it needs to be, discarding all of our materials taking our gloves off and making sure that we work. Um, the next one that we're going, I'm going to show you is um, to apply um, a sterile dressing. Uh, so we are going to have our sterile field. Um, we are going to, of course, follow our sterile um, technique. And we are going to first open the way from you, <laughs> away from the patient, and then towards the patient. And then towards you. Uh, we are also going to make sure that we are undoing our sterile um, saline cap um, before we start. And then it's all loose. And then we are going 
she put our gloves on. A glove on. So. Of course, we are going to practice the sterile technique for putting on your gloves. Okay, um, we are going to put on the glove um, on our dominant hand. So we're going to pinch it. We're going to step away from our sterile field. We're only going to put one glove on. And then we're going to come to our sterile field and we're going to organize our supplies. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to organize our supplies on our sterile field, making sure we're not contaminating our sterile field. Um, then we are going to, with our ungloved hand, we will come around <laughs> and pour the solution in there on top of our gauze pads. And then we'll go ahead and glove our other hand. take my forceps and I am going to take a layer of the gauze, my moistening gauze, and we are going to place it in the wound. Okay, so we're going to make sure that we are placing the gauze pads um, and the crevices, um, we're going to do one layer at a time. And we're going to make sure that we're not packing them too tight. Um, after we put our first layer on, we're going to ensure that we put another layer um, of gauze pads. So we have two layers. We're going to make sure that it doesn't extend beyond the wound. Our gauze pads, um, we are going to um, place um, a pad over the, the wound. And then we are going to use our um, cuffs um, to secure the pad. Um, so. One right there, and how you make a Montgomery strap is you are going to leave it as such. And you're going to fold it down again. scissors and make a little slit through. Leaving about a half inch to an inch off to the sides of the wound. Then we are going to take Go ahead and just loop it through our Montgomery straps. You're not supposed to be overlapping like that. I made them way too long. Now we're going to tie them, tie it off, and we're going to make sure that we're placing um, the part where we tied off with um, on a part where it's not going to be uncomfortable for the patient. We're going to make sure that we clean up, we wash our hands. Um, we are going to, well, this one is Montgomery strap, so this one's going to be a little easier to remove. Uh, we can remove it like that. If we were doing the other way, where we completely have the tape on, we're going to kind of hold um, their skin taut, um, and we're going to remove it kind of, we're going to move it slowly, um, and just kind of um, 
place the pull the skin the opposite direction of where you're pulling the tape and we are going to remove uh, when we are moving the um, uh, gauze we're going to do one layer at a time so we're going to start with the top layer and remove um, and we are going to also start from um, when we are removing the gauze we're going to start from the corner and 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 remove towards the center of the wound and again we're doing one layer at a time dispose of all your gauze um, your tape and uh, we're going to uh, practice hand hygiene um, when we're done take our gloves off and yeah. we are taking or removing off the dressings we are going to notice any kind of drainage color if there's any odor and then of course um, practice our standard precautions and throw everything away wash your hands yeah. um, for collecting a culture we're going to go ahead and um, take our culture sample out we are going to place it on the red granulated area um, when we are putting it back in we're going to make sure that we are not touching the outside of um, the tubing and we're going to put it in there we're going to make sure that we label it with the name date the time uh, the reason for the culture what kind of culture um, then we're going to make sure that we um, wash our hands take our gloves off wash our hands and clean up the area um, so when choosing the kind of tape that we want to use for dressing um, we are going to always keep in mind uh, the wound size, the location of the wound, um, how much drainage or edema, um, the frequency of the wound dressing, um, the patient's activity. Um, for the tape width, we also want to ensure that, um, that the larger um, the dressing, the wider the width of the tape is going to be. Um, we also want to make sure that when we are applying tape that we are about a half inch past the dressing and we always want to make sure that our tape is intact um, and um, not coming off. Um, if so, then we need to make sure that we change it.